This bottle is not empty, check it out! Whoa, and this is not a magic trick! But wait, here I have another bottle and as you can see now the color is different. So what is this reaction? What do we have inside of these bottles? And how is this related to high voltage? And the main question of this episode, what is plasma? That being said, let's get started. Hi guys, in a moment I want to explain what is this, but first we need to pay the bills, so just a quick message from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. My new project was requiring some flexible PCBs, and PCBWay was the right solution for that. And the order process is so simple, just go to PCBWay.com and select flexible PCBs. Upload your Gerber files as always and select your settings directly on their website. You also have the option for rigid flex PCBs if you want and other settings for the color, the thickness, the gold immersion and so on. I received my PCBs in just a couple of days and they look amazing. The tracks are very small but even so, PCBWay did a great job and they have capabilities that go even lower than that and you could check them on their website. So try yourself their services for flexible PCBs like mine and like that you can complete your awesome project. And check more for other services for prototyping PCBs automatic assembly, SMD stencil and much more on PCBWay.com Ok, now let's continue with the video and see what this is. What's up my friends, welcome back. Inside of these bottles I have 6 different gases, 5 of them are noble gases, but we also have nitrogen which is a peasant gas. Peasant. Nah guys, just kidding. Anyway, all these gases have something in common right now, they are under low pressure. So first they've created a vacuum inside of these bottles and then they've inserted the gas inside of the bottles. And that's very important for today, the vacuum. And then I have this very basic Tesla coil. And by the way you can get one of these modules with the links below if you want and that way also support this channel. Anyway, this creates a very high voltage on top of this needle. And when I get my tube close to this, look what happens. It glows. Also, depending on the gas inside, the color is different. Here I have helium. And as you can see, the color is white. This is so cool to watch. And now I have argon. And as you can see, the color is like white violet. And now my favorite one, neon. As you can see, it's a very powerful and bright red. This is so cool. Now here I have Krypton and this creates some sort of like white yellowish color as you can see. And also some oscillations inside, some dots as you can see, that's very interesting. Now here I have Xenon. And as you can see, it creates also some white, but this is like bluish. This is very cool. It's not as bright, but it's cool to watch. And finally, we have nitrogen. And as you can see, it creates like a violet and also gold color. It's a mix between violet and gold. Actually, it should be only violet, I think. Maybe there is some contamination inside of the tube. But look how cool it looks. Okay, so why is this happening? And how is this related to high voltage? Well, for centuries humans consider only three states of matter. And those was obviously solid, liquid and gas. Like you know, earth, water and air. But then people start to realize that fire was neither a solid, a gas or a liquid. So questions started to flow. Like for example, what is fire anyway? We all know that the state of matter of the elements is affected by the temperature but also by the pressure. For example, water passes from liquid to gas at 100 degrees. We all know that. But not always. For example, if you go at high altitudes, where the pressure is lower, it's not 100 degrees anymore. So we have to take into account the temperature, but also the pressure. This fourth state of matter, the plasma, appear in science laboratories once people manage to create vacuum and high voltage. 
With these two together, people realize that gases behave differently when you have very low pressure and high temperature. On one side, the vacuum pump was invented, and on the other side, with the inventions of Faraday, scientists were able to create higher and higher voltage. I'm talking about thousands of volts or even millions. So those two things, high voltage and very low pressure, created something unique for the first time in the world, called the Geisler tube, and that evolved into the CRT, or better known, the cathode ray tube. In a previous video, I've talked about the cathode ray tube and how fascinating it is. So please go and check it out because it's very interesting and you learn a lot from it. Actually, it's the evolution of the TV. And here in my hand, I have the guts of a very small CRT TV. But this is for another video. Anyway, basically, people realized that at very low pressure and high temperature, gases behave differently. For example, we all think that gases are good insulators. I mean, you can't get electrocuted through mid-air, right? Or could you? Yeah, you could. It's called plasma discharge. Remember my Tesla coil speaker? Anyway. So basically, scientists realized that at very low pressure and high temperature, these gases could conduct electricity. Also, they realized that electrons are flowing in straight lines, that electrons could be affected by magnetic fields and also electric fields, that some objects could create shadows inside of these vacuum tubes when applied electricity, also the fluorescent materials and so on. And with all that, the TV was invented. I talk a lot more about CRT in my previous episode. William Crookes perfected the vacuum tube and start making tests with all types of gases at high voltage and low pressure, and seeing this glowing effect, he realized that he was seeing a new state of matter, and he called this radiating matter. A few years forward, we realized that inside of these tubes, under high voltage, the molecules of the gas acquired so much energy that the electrons, which usually are orbiting the nuclei, now have enough energy to escape that uh, orbit, so they don't have to orbit anymore, they can flow freely. And that resulted into some sort of soup of positive charged particles, negative particles, neutral particles, free electrons, and so on. And that's why Irving Landmore called this soup with the name that we are using nowadays, plasma. Because it reminded him about the blood plasma with all the white cells, the red cells, the plaquettes, the proteins, and so on. Like a soup. That's why we call it plasma. Plasma is so cool to watch. Actually, nowadays we know that plasma is very common in the universe. Actually, it's the most common state of matter in the entire universe. It's the main component of stars and nebulas. So the next time you look at the sky at night, you should know that all that is plasma. Actually, you can also see it here on Earth with lightnings and also the aurora borealis. So for the question from the beginning, is fire plasma? Well, no. Because fire is just a chemical reaction. It could have plasma inside, but for basic fire like this one, the temperature is not high enough to create plasma. But the fire of other materials such as magnesium, if you light it up, it could reach thousands of degrees, and that could create plasma. Okay, so by now we know that plasma is just a soup of particles. But we could say the same about gas, right? I mean, in the end, gas is just the same, a soup of particles some molecules bouncing around in a confined space. So what is the difference? Well, the difference is that with a gas, the particles are colliding with other particles around them. That's how pressure is represented. But with plasma, all the particles are moving all together, like a collective. That's why they are very good electrical conductors. So basically, the plasma could act like a neutral fluid. And not just that, it could also be confined by very strong magnetic fields. Remember that in my CRT video, I was able to bend the trajectory of the electron using magnets? Well, they are trying something similar like that, but with plasma, in the ITER project, for example. And this project wants to create nuclear fusion. Fusion, not fission. It's basically creating a new sun. And for that, they have to create plasma at millions of degrees and confine that plasma inside of the reactor using very strong electromagnets. That's what's happening with the ITER project. And if we achieve that, we can have free energy forever. Such a challenge for all mankind. Science is beautiful. Anyway, for today's experiment, we don't need to reach millions of degrees. Instead of using very high temperature to create plasma, in this case, we are using vacuum and high voltage. 
The result is the same but this is called Discharge Plasma and it's still plasma so it will look very cool. And for that I bought this very basic Tesla coil kit from AliExpress and took me only 5 minutes to assemble, it's very easy to assemble, I'll play some time lapse if you want to see it. Anyway, if you also want this kind of module, you can buy it from the links below and with that you can also support this channel and thank you for that. And that way you can also make your own experiments. So this creates high frequency and high voltage, around 10,000 volts. And when that voltage hits the molecules of the gas, it accelerates some electrons and those electrons will pass to the next molecules, hitting the molecules, accelerating another electron and that will accelerate other electrons in other molecules creating a so-called chain effect. That's why the entire gas gets ionized. And that's why it glows. Ok, so it gets ionized, but why it glows? Well, as I've told you, some molecules are losing electrons. But when they are colliding together with other molecules, those molecules are gaining an electron. And when that happens, that electron means that it lost some energy. And that energy is released in the form of a photon, or light. I talk a lot more about this in my diode video and that's how basically LEDs are working. Anytime one electron is changing the energy level and loses some energy, will lose that energy in the form of light or a photon. And also depending on the gas, this energy gap is different, so the light that is emitted also has a different frequency, resulting into different colors. That's why we are seeing different colors with different gases. And if you don't have these bottles with gases and vacuum, you could also try a homemade experiment using a syringe. You take it, you close the tip so it could create vacuum and when you pull it back, you create some sort of vacuum inside of it. And when you get close to the high voltage, as you can see, we get plasma. In this case, the color is like violet because as you know, the air is like 78% nitrogen and as we have seen, the color that is created in plasma of nitrogen is like violet, purple. Plasma nowadays is used in a lot of technologies especially in high-tech laboratories. We use it inside of reactors to deposit materials on top of surfaces and create microchips. We also use it in uh, biological laboratories to ionize samples and then analyze them. And we also use it in neon lightning, for example. But I think in the future, plasma will help us to get a lot cleaner energy forever inside of those fusion reactors. And we are just one more step to achieve that. And once we achieve that, it will be amazing because that will change everything energy wise. By the way guys, I also have this last bottle and this is for a future project. Inside here I have xenon gas. As you can see, it also glows. But I want to use this for something that I've seen on the internet. And this project will also involve a PCB, high frequency signals and also a plasma ring. I want to create a ring of plasma inside of this sphere. And that should be very cool. So make sure that you subscribe in order to see that video as well. So guys, I really hope that you like this show of light and color and that you have learned something new about gases and plasma. And if so, consider supporting my work on Patreon. Thanks again and keep up you guys. So guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended. I hope that you like it. And the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons to you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below, uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts, all this kind of stuff will support my channel. So thank you very much once again.